Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India class to our course mechanical behavior of materials so in the last lecture we discussed about how substitutional and interstitial atoms are going to interact with edge and its two dislocations okay now let's consider if we have an edge dislocation where this substitutional and interstitial atoms are going to set okay so here i am showing an edge dislocation can clearly see here right and uh, this is your extra half plane this particular plane is your slip plane okay now we are considering both substitutional and interstitial at Okay, now let's consider first interstitial atoms. So interstitial atoms are going to uh, be sitting at the bottom half of the slip plane. So before that, let me tell you, and you already know, Professor Shashan Shekhar has already mentioned about this, that on the top, so if you have edge dislocation, here on the top part, you have compressive stress, right? So this part, is in under compression and the bottom here you have tension and then in these regions you have shear also right okay so now depending upon the size of the atoms they are going to sit either in compression region or tension region okay so now the solute atoms they are going to be sitting here Okay, so if we have an interstitial atom, then they will be sitting they'll be sitting below the extra half plane. Why? Because then you are going to uh, reduce the lattice strain. Remember, this portion is under tension. So if you want to fit something uh, at uh, this position, then there will be some expansion in the lattice. So it is going to reduce the lattice strain, right? So interstitial atoms are going to sit below the extra half plane. Now let's talk about the substitutional atom. So if we have a very large substitutional atom, so suppose I choose this particular atom and I replace it with a larger substitutional atom. Okay. Now you can also see the uh, uh, tension region here at the bottom of the extra half plane. The strain in this particular region is going to be reduced if I am going to put a larger substitutional atom. On the other hand, if we have a smaller substitutional atom, like suppose I choose this one. So if I have a smaller substitutional atom, then they are going to sit on the top of extra half plane okay on the upper side okay so this is how the interstitial atoms and substitutional atoms they are going to uh, go to uh, go in in the lattice and choose the positions and overall what they are trying to do they are trying to do two things the first one is that they are trying to reduce the overall strain in the lattice so i can write impurity atoms are attracted and why they are attracted remember in the last lecture we discussed both are associated with the strain field right so edge dislocation also has in strain field uh, stress field and these impurity atoms they also have stress field 
right so they will be the stress field will be interacting with each other and these atoms will go at the core of its dislocation to reduce the overall strain and energy of the system okay so impurity atoms are attracted to dislocations to reduce the overall strain energy so if you see they are actually cancelling out the strain in the lattice right so partially cancel the strain in the lattice okay so i can write another table let me make one more table so for substitutional atoms depending upon the size of the substitutional atom they are going they will sit either on the top of the half plane or at the bottom of the half plane and that means if the size is larger they are going to sit at the bottom of the half plane so that they can reduce the overall tensile strain in the lattice okay so we have point defect okay since we are talking about uh, s dislocation so i have two regions tensile and compressive okay now we can have smaller substitutional atom or we can have larger okay so now the smaller substitutional atom they will be repelled in the tensile region so they will be more attracted towards the compressive region because they want to reduce the overall strain in that particular region right so here i can mention repelled and they will be attracted towards the compressive region and the larger substitutional atom they will be attracted towards the tensile region and here they will be repelled okay now interstitial atoms as i mentioned they will be preferably sitting at the bottom of the extra half plane because they want to reduce the tensile strain in the lattice so interstitial atoms will mostly go below the dislocation line okay so both whether it is interstitial or substitutional atoms they will be attracted towards the core of a dislocation line okay or core of a dislocation now since they are sitting there and they are being attracted towards the dislocation if i want to move the dislocation you have to remove those atoms from there right 
and this will require an extra amount of energy or extra amount of stress isn't it so that we can cause further de plastic deformation in the material okay so i can write if a dislocation wants to move it has to tear itself from the impurity atoms okay and this will require extra energy that means higher stress okay so you are actually giving some strengthening to the material because of the presence of these solute atoms at the core of the dislocation okay and this is the genesis of something called yield point phenomena which we are going to discuss uh, uh, now okay so there is some uh, uh, terminology we call a uh, total atmosphere okay so now we know that the interstitial atoms they are going to sit at the core of the dislocation that to at the bottom of the extra happening okay now if you talk about steel they will contain carbon atoms isn't it so these carbon atoms they are also interstitial atoms right impurities not impurities interstitial uh, atoms so they are also going to sit below the dislocation line at the dislocation core so if i have a dislocation line something like this okay so these atoms will be sitting here they will be attracted towards the dislocation core okay so these are carbon atoms say in steel okay so what they are doing they are actually making a cloud at the dislocation core isn't it they are making an atmosphere at the dislocation core and this was proposed by cotrell so the name is given as cotrell atmosphere and we also call it cotrell cloud okay so now this cotrell cloud is also going to affect the movement of dislocation so if you want to move this particular dislocation you have to apply higher amount of stress so that dislocation can leave this cotrell atmosphere and move ahead okay and that is what the, the uh, what we use when we try to explain something called ill point phenomena okay ill point phenomena so let's discuss what is ill point phenomena and typically you are going to observe this ill point phenomena in medium carbon steel okay now uh, when professor sashank chetra was teaching you tensile testing he must have shown you the plot of say polycrystalline pure aluminum and if you have a sample of polycrystalline pure aluminum and you do a tensile test you are going to have a plot like this not up to the scale but something like this isn't it so this is the engineering stress engineering strain plot say polycrystalline aluminum Okay. 
this you know and this is the general uh, curve we are going to observe for almost all uh, alloys say copper alloys magnesium alloys even aluminum alloys all polycrystalline alloys right but in medium carbon steel we are going to observe something different So if I again plot engineering stress and engineering strain, we are going to observe uh, elastic regime initially, okay? But then you are going to see a drop, and then some fluctuation, something like this. And then it is going to follow what you have seen in polycrystalline aluminum, something like this. Okay, again, not up to the scale, but uh, this is a schematic for understanding. Okay, so you can clearly see now the difference between the tensile curve of polycrystalline pure aluminum, and this is for medium carbon steel. And this is happening because steel has carbon and nitrogen atom as impurity, impurity uh, as uh, interstitial atoms. Okay, and they are sitting at the core of the dislocation, especially when you have any lit. Okay, so you can see uh, uh, a maximum uh, uh, point here, and this corresponds to. Let me change the color. So this is called upper ill point this particular point is called lower ill point okay and the fluctuation what you see is because of propagation of Luder bands, so the fluctuations. This is because of propagation of Luder bands. We also call it as stretch strain. Okay, so we have uh, upper ill point, then lower ill point, and then we have a fluctuation, which is because of the propagation of Luder bands. And I'm going to explain each one of this terminology. And then we see what you have already learned in the case of, say, polycrystalline pure aluminum. So you see strain hardening, then this particular point on the top, we have UTS, and then this is a fracture point. Okay, so this is the difference between polycrystalline pure aluminum and medium carbon steel. Okay, so now let's understand why do we see upper ill point, then why do we see lower ill point, and then why do we have this uh, fluctuation, okay, and the formation of Luder bands. Okay, so what is happening? You have, uh, say you have a dislocation. Right, and then this dislocation has a cloud of impurity, right? Impurity atoms in this case, say carbon atoms or nitrogen atoms. Okay, now to have a plaster deformation, all these dislocations which have a, a quartal atmosphere around it, this dislocation need to leave uh, these uh, atoms, right? And they have to move so that you can cause a plaster deformation. Now when you start stretching your sample, when you start applying, you know, strain rate, you apply a uh, strain rate, what is happening? You have a very nice elastic region that all of us know. Now, the upper ill point correspond to a point where dislocations in a particular set of drains 
are leaving the quadrilateral atmosphere okay now remember the uh, medium carbon steel what we are talking about is a polycrystalline materials so some set of grains are going to be favorably oriented towards the tensile axis that means they have a higher smith factor so a set of grains they are going to deform much earlier than the other grains isn't it and there you are going to observe that this or uh, dislocations in this set of grains they are going to be freed from the quadrilateral atmosphere but this will require higher amount of stress as we have discussed earlier because you have to free from this quadrilateral atmosphere you have to free the dislocation right and that is the genesis of upper yield point okay so why do we see upper yield point so as stress grows up some dislocations okay, in a set of grain or in a set of favorably oriented grain so these dislocations are freed from the quadrilateral atmosphere okay and now to do that to free this dislocation from the quadrilateral atmosphere you require higher amount of stress okay and this is why we have upper yield point okay now you have freed the dislocations and they are going to move easily right in a particular set of grains okay and what you are going to see you are going to have see a burst of plastic straining okay more or less in in a narrow region and that particular narrow region is called luder band so when this happens you are going to see a burst of plastic straining in a narrow band okay and or say region and this is called luder band so let me draw a sample so that you can understand it better so suppose you have a dot bone sample and you are doing tensile test okay so some set of grains will be favorably oriented towards the tensile axis that means they have higher smith factor so those sort of grains will will be activating first okay and the dislocations they are going to be freed from the quadrilateral atmosphere so say we form a luder band here so you have a burst of plastic straining in this particular narrow band so you start forming luder bands so say in these two regions we saw so this is luder band both of this okay if you if you can image your sample you know sample surface you will be able to clearly see a nice band which will have a different contrast from the rest of the sample when you do a tensile test of medium carbon steel okay so you have formed a luder band 
so that is the genesis of upper yield point now why do we see lower yield point okay so the strain rate can be given as b rho v where rho is the dislocation density and v is your velocity of the dislocation so this is dislocation density and v is velocity of dislocations okay now v is related to the stress so higher the stress the velocity is going to be higher okay now remember whenever we do tensile test we always try to do it in a constant strain rate so we have we apply constant strain rate say 10 to the power minus 3 per second 10 to the power minus 4 per second something like that okay so constant uh, so a strain rate is on the left side so we try to maintain this term epsilon not as constant okay b is also constant now we are increasing the dislocation density in the region of luder band right these two regions i have shown here the luder band formation so there in that particular region you have increased the dislocation density okay that means to maintain the constant strain rate the velocity of dislocation needs to be reduced okay because you have increased the dislocation density so what is happening rho is increasing in the luder band region so v has to decrease because you want to maintain epsilon not this guy here constant now if v is reducing see on the right side then tau the stress is also going to reduce isn't it and that is the genesis of lower yield point okay so because of the increase in dislocation density the velocity of the uh, dislocation needs to be reduced so that you can maintain a constant strain rate and this leads to the reduction in the stress right and that is why we see a reduction in stress to lower yield point from upper yield point okay so you have something like this okay so you so already upper yield point now this is lower yield point okay and this lower yield point is happening because of the reduction in the stress to maintain constant strain rate so let me write down lower yield point and this happens okay reduction in the stress to maintain constant strain rate okay and this drop from upper yield point to lower yield point this particular drop is called yield drop okay so the more the reduction uh, in the stress is you will observe the yield drop to be more okay so this is the genesis of upper yield point and lower yield point now let's understand why do you see the fluctuation so the question is why fluctuation okay so now let me draw the uh, schematic of the sample again and suppose you have these two loader bands
you can form actually multiple loader bands. Okay. Now, if you see this particular region, uh, say I have marred one and one. Okay, both are so initiation of the loader band when you see a upper yield point. Okay. Now, what will happen? You have generated lots of dislocations in these two regions, both uh, loader band, both the loader bands. Okay. So stresses near that region can grow to very high value. Okay. So because of the two reasons. One, because you have a formation of loader bands in both the regions and uh, what will happen because of that? There will be slight reduction in the cross-sectional area. Okay, so the first point is a higher stress in the region one because of a little bit. Reduction in cross sectional area. So you are going to see an increment in stress in that particular region, and second, stress concentration due to high dislocation density. Okay, so after you have formed luder bands, right, the first luder bands, what is going to happen? Locally, you are going to see a very small change in area in these two regions, here as well as here, okay? Now, since there is a reduction, slight reduction in area, locally, you are going to see stress concentration in both regions, okay, near both the regions. But remember, realize it that the, this increment in stress concentration is not that very high, okay. Now, point B is more dominant compared to point A here. So, in point B, since you have formed these looter bands, you have generated more number of dislocations. So, this dislocation density increase will lead to a stress concentration near region one in, in both the regions here. Okay, this means that locally near these two regions, you have a stress increment, which can lead to the removal or which can lead to the uh, uh, movement of dislocations near these regions. The dislocations can free themselves from the total atmosphere because of the stress concentration okay see ideally if you want to free that you have to go to very very high stress isn't it like upper hill point but since locally you already have a stress concentration you don't need to go to that very high value so instead after upper and lower hill point you don't need to go to again to this upper hill point value, because of stress concentration in this region, you have to slightly increase the stress and the dislocations nearby these two regions, they are going to free themselves from the total atmosphere and you are going to see the formation of looter bands or propagation of looter bands. So they are going to propagate in both the regions. Okay, so you are again going to see a uh, yield drop because of, again, because they have freed, the dislocations have freed themselves from the um, uh, total atmosphere, right? Now this process will continue. So you are going to again form a new looter band. So say propagation of looter band. Since it is happening nearby this region, I will say propagation of looter bands instead of saying new looter bands. Okay, so you are going to see again increment and then decrease in stress and this process continues till 
these leader bands has propagated have propagated throughout the cross section so they have propagated throughout the cross section here okay throughout the cross section and after that since they have traveled throughout the cross section or throughout the gas section they are going to show the similar phenomena what you observed in the case of pure aluminum okay so the fluctuation now you know why this occurred okay so remember that the second luder band will always form near to the first luder band because of the stress concentration in the region of first luder band because of these two points okay and this is how luder bands propagate in a medium carbon steel and finally you see the fluctuations in the stress you will not see in pure aluminum because there is nothing there right it's a pure aluminum case okay and in, even in aluminum alloys you are not going to observe this because those are substitutional atoms rather than in, uh, interstitial atom and interstitial atom remember they are they will give more hardening to the material we have discussed about that okay so this is what i wanted to discuss about the yield point phenomena now one question you know always come uh, comes to mind that how can we remove this carbon and nitrogen atoms if they are so much troublesome right so in industries what people do they use uh, uh, carbide formers like niobium titanium etc in steel making process and thereby they form carbides so you are not actually having free carbon atoms which can go and pin the dislocations that is one of the ways to remove carbon from the uh, interstitial uh, positions okay and the second is that uh, uh, you can use uh, in steel industry people use rs process where you, they use uh, vacuum and then they remove the interstitial uh, atoms okay. uh, carbon as well as oxygen they also remove so all these are done in the steel making process itself and the third is you can use something called steam pass rolling or uh, we also call it as temper rolling to get rid of this formation of luder bands or stretcher strains okay so we have uh, completed uh, solid solution strengthening also and uh, in the next uh, class we are going to start talking about drain boundary strengthening so till now we have completed two strengthening mechanisms first we started with uh, precipitation strengthening and dispersion strengthening and then we have completed solid solution strengthening and next we are going to talk about drain boundary strengthening okay thank you